is Perch, and we are looking at image solicitations for February. This will be relatively quick, uh, but what's image have going on? And by the way, for any company, if you would like me to run through what you have going on, I'm happy to do it just to give some perspective on it. So first off the bat, we've got a couple new series, and this is one of them. This is Radiant Black by Kyle Higgins, and this is promising to deliver something it's got some good, this is a good cover, by the way. This is gonna stand out on a shelf. From a retailer perspective, this is going to vanish on the shelves. Um, even with the colors and everything else, if you think about how it's tucked, the you, you see this part, the title's gonna fall in many cases on many most shelves. Some have the full comic out, but this is your core area. And they've got the, the character here, but it's, it's gonna kind of vanish. Uh, if you put this up against a bunch of other comics, it's going to vanish. This, on the other hand, is going to do really well. This is a really good, smart cover. And that's blank. And Yeah, anyway. Um, Radiant Black is uh, promising to be a kind of brand new, reinventing superheroes for a new generation. Um, I, I'm always kind of a little skeptical about those kinds of claims, but... Uh, it's, it's intended to be uh, kind of fans of Invincible and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. It's going to take that, that kind of um, perspective. So we'll see. Radiant Black. Um, it's a new book. Uh, Image is definitely, I think, high on that this month. They believe that's going to be a, a good book for them. Here is Stray Dogs, number one, which is another new series. And this book is um, promising to be, yeah, it's, it's promising to be Lady and the Tramp meets Silence of the Lambs. So... Uh, that is, that is an interesting, um, okay. Uh, she doesn't recognize any of the dogs. How'd she end up in this house? Where's her, where's her lady? It's a five issue, um, suspense thriller with dogs. So, okay. Um, here is deep beyond, uh, number one of 12. So 12 issue series here. And uh, we've got the, the basic premise behind this is in an underpopulated future Earth, devastated by the dire consequences of the millennium bug, the millennium bug, OK, the survival of mankind and the planet itself is handled by a small number of people, talented scientists who, despite the adverse situation and stupid feuds, uh, continue to divide the small number of people still alive. Hmm. Sounds like a story of the times. The 100 meets low. A hint of death stranding. Uh, I mean, <laughs> OK. Um, Sure. Um, Mirka Andolfo, who did Unnatural um, uh, with writer David Goy, uh, should be an interesting story. I, I'm, I'm worried that in 2021, we're going to get a lot of these, um, you know, what happens when a pandemic plus, you know, political polarization hits our country. I, I'm worried a little bit we're getting a lot of those, uh, but, but who knows. Here's Two Moons. And this is, I thought this was a limited series, but maybe it is not. Um, this is from Rumble and BPRD writer John Arducci with uh, Valerio, I'm not going to try. Uh, it's an ongoing horror story. This is a Native American set uh, fighting for the Union during the Civil War. And uh, there is uh, shenanigans and evil, um, uh, presumably evil beyond the Civil War. Aria, Heavenly Creatures. It's a one shot. Um, this is uh, Lady Kildare, Princess of the Fairy. So, uh, you know, this is a uh, you know fantasy kind of kind of kind of story. Graphic fantasy number one, facsimile edition. This is I, I I'm curious. Uh, Eric Larson has been kind of high on this. This is reprinting. Uh, one of the hardest and most valuable uh, to find Savage Dragon comics of all time, Graphic Fantasy, or the dragon made his first appearance. I don't know that there's the interest in this that uh, Larson and others thinks there is, but he's proud of his early work, and and he should be. So, you know, why not? Uh, here's more. Number two. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's nice that he's putting this stuff out, particularly for collectors of Savage Dragon that uh, really want to see in this. There's, there's, um, there's presumably no tentacle porn. In this, so uh, that's that's good stuff. Um, here's Rat Queens number twenty-five. This series is ending, so this is a final issue here by Ryan Ferrier. Um, this obviously this title's had quite a run and a lot of drama behind the scenes around it. So uh, answers abound, and it's the thrilling conclusion uh, to uh, the series. But uh, but there will be more. Uh, there will be it will it will get started again. Here's Write It in Blood. Uh, it's an original graphic novel. And it's it's promising, uh, you know, 
a drive through the Texas countryside uh, with the infamous little Harkness uh, in the trunk of their car. They're meant to deliver Harkness to their boss, but things become complicated. Write it in blood. Um, here's the Death or Glory hardcover edition. This is a fun little comic. Really fell under the radar um, for a lot of reasons, but uh, this is probably one of Reminder's more solid image titles that uh, just didn't didn't really get the attention or promotion it deserved. Uh, here's the first trade paperback for the Department of Truth by James Tinian. Here's a scene of the crime by Ed Brubaker, trade paperback. Um, here is a Spawn Compendium, new edition, um, by McFarlane and, um, and Capullo. It's a good time to do that. Actually, it's a bad time to do that. He should have been doing that kind of this month while death metal was going on, but, but still everybody loves Spawn. You know, it's, it's good. This is one through 50. You're getting there. Here is the Prince of Cats, uh, trade paperback. So we got that. Here's Redneck, Volume 5. Yeah, I love how these, these, these are solicitations. It's like, let's just throw a bunch of graphic novels in here, and then we'll get to the regular comics again. Um, why not? Wicked and Divine, Complete Witchblade, uh, Michael Turner. Uh, I miss Michael Turner. Um, not, not, for, not, for the, not for that, but just yeah, he was a good guy. He was just a solid guy. Um, anyway, uh, Ascender, number 16 by Jeff Lemire. Uh, this, is, this is a nice little sleeper title. It, it's a good book, um, but it just, again, Image, I, you know, in my mind, Image struggles. Like, one of the things that they could really use is is somebody to kind of promote these books once they've been out for a few months so they don't just get lost on the shelves. I get their model. That's not really what they're about, but, you know, that's probably preventing them from growing, I, I would say. Here's Birthright, number 46. A lot of fans of this book. Uh, nice to see it. It's still going, so we get a little bit of a... Um, you know, a little bit of a story, a backstory, which is good. Uh, Bliss, number five by Sean Lewis. Uh, this is, uh, you know, return to the final arc of their critical series. So this, this title, the final arc, uh, I guess so. Um, there we go. It's a new story arc in this final arc. Issue five. Um, here's Commanders in Crisis, number five of 12. I, this is Steve Orlando's book, and I wanted this to be great, uh, personally. Uh, I, I think Steve Orlando is somebody who's probably underappreciated, certainly at DC. He, he can do good work, and um, you know, the idea of, of telling a new type of superhero story and everything else. Um, but this, this uh, I've not been a fan. I, I just, I, I, this has just been a struggle to read, and I, I feel like it's, um, it's rapidly falling off the radar. Um, here's crossover number four, uh, by Donnie Cates. This is another one where I'm very fascinated to see how this plays out over time. Uh, it was definitely built with a ton of hype, but I, I imagine it's going to have a hard time continuing that hype. Uh, but, but we will see. They're going to magical Colorado. Uh, you got to stop in Boulder if you're going to magical Colorado department of truth, number six. Uh, by James Tinian. Here's another book where I'm, again, I'm fascinated to see how it plays out over time. Uh, Firepower by Kirkman and, and Samney. I think this is a really nice book that is out, which is uh, flying under the radar for a lot of people. Uh, but this is a this is a pretty damn good book uh, to check out. Aha, uh, number two of six. This is by Maxwell Prince. And it's a funny, sad clown series for a funny, sound, sad clown world. The mother-daughter road trip. Um, homesick Pilots, number three. Uh, this is a continuous search through the old James house, but the house does not want them to find her. And now there's Restless Spirits. This is a book where it hasn't been billed completely what it is that it's after. Is it intending to be a horror book is it depending to be a uh, it, it is it's it's this could use some it, like a lot of things with um image it needs some a little bit better branding of what you're in for ice cream man number 24 this is definitely a horror anthology type book um this is this is some good stuff we got a telethon all right um this this is this this book's found its niche um ink blot number six uh which is uh you know magical prisons and the fabric of reality and other pieces. There's some nice uh, character works going into this as well, but once again, it's, it's again falling under the radar a bit. Here's Kick-Ass versus Hit-Girl number four, which uh, the first issue just came out. So uh, we're getting uh, presumably a team up now as, uh, well, no, it's saying no. So uh, Hit-Girl's you know, hit on her back 
and uh, and Kickass is on the run. Where will it all go? They they got to team up at some point. Um, I don't know how many issues this is going. It's not going. Uh, it's not ongoing. But I don't. I haven't gotten a sense of is it twelve issues or where? What? How long is this issue? How long is this comic going? Monstrous by Marjorie Liu. Nailbiter Returns number ten. Uh, Nomen Omen twelve of fifteen. An interesting way to book it. So got a couple uh, magic kind of slice of life books and lots of things going on. Post Americana number three. Looks like, is this guy the president? He's doing some killing. Steve Skorosh, Dave Stewart. Um, Cannibal Nightmare. Yeah. All right. This is this is a, this is a weird little book. Um, Rain Like Hammers, number two of five. Savage Dragon, number 257. We got Thunder God. Yeah, Thor's back. And he's punching, he's hammering uh, Savage Dragon in the face, uh, which is a, a welcome change from Savage Dragon uh doing other things in his wife's face here's scumbag number five the world's fate rests with the worst person on it where is this comic going um you know ernie discovers a world full of bad people doing bad things can he ditch a lifelong apolitical lifestyle to help the good guys win or will he be a scumbag he'll be a scumbag i mean that's that's what he's going to be that's the story seven to eternity number 17 this is the end of the series uh, right here, this is a comic that had a huge delay right in the middle, which kind of derailed. I mean, it definitely derailed the momentum. It had a lot of momentum when it started, and then they had some schedule delays, and then some bigger schedule delays. And uh, this will be this will be something that will get collected up. Uh, Seventeen issues, but this is the conclusion to the comic. I, I have a hard time believing it was meant to conclude on issue seventeen, but but here we are. Spawn number three fifteen. We get is this a new Angela? To replace the old Angela. New team change. She spawn. Gunslinger spawn. Medieval spawn. And the Reaper. It's she spawn. Got a redhead. Got a ready to, to do some damage. Got to do, got to make up for losing Angela still. Stillwater by Zdarsky and Ramon Perez. Uh, this is a new, this is a horror film. A, a horror film. Horror series. We've got Tataris uh, number 10. Which is a sci-fi, I believe, kind of uh, wide-ranging kind of comic walking dead deluxe number eight so you know david finch cover who's doing all the covers uh lately <laughs> anyway um this is the uh, color reproduction as how do you make more money off walking dead you, you color it um and here is a uh, walking dead deluxe number nine i'm not sure the color will will really mean as much as oh that's it okay so that's our image for February. A handful of comics uh, coming out. A few notable exceptions. Rat Queens and Seven for Eternity ending. A couple new comics coming up. Not the big profile names. Uh, Kyle Higgins' book is probably the one that is most on the list. Although um, the creator uh, of Mercy kind of doing uh, that title is also probably something to keep your eye on. So it's so a handful of things. Definitely a lot more uh, horror being done there. Uh, I think that there's, you know, uh, Deep Beyond is the one I was thinking of there by Mer uh, Merka. Uh, I think that there's, there, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff there, but definitely images is leaning in more toward kind of fantasy and horror. And outside of that, uh, you know, that, that, that's what you got. It's, it's, yeah, which is their bread and butter lately these days. So what do you say? Are any of these titles exciting to you? What are you going to pick up? What are you going to buy? What is on your mind? Let me know in the comments below. What's really, uh, what's really got your interest up and, uh, like subscribe, click the bell for notifications and thanks for listening.